So if you're looking to make something that transfers human energy into power, this is what you need. Greetings friends, it's another video about the spin bike. And I just had to explain a couple of things again because people don't really seem to be getting it. That's the model number of the motor. I'm not sure what that means. So this motor is a 250 watt motor off a hoverboard. This motor here is not connected to this motor. It can spin freely. I was, I did try it with two motors, but my honest opinion is you're just losing so much efficiency that you're definitely not going to get to I didn't even see any more power. If anything, it was less out of two than it is out of one. This appears to be quite a good one and it is fairly heavy. Uh, if you take any apart yourself, <coughs> you will notice that some of them are heavier than others. Okay, this one is quite heavy as well. The motors connected to the bike, I simply drilled an M12 hole through here on what would be called the stem, the handlebar stem, I guess. And then we've used this old industrial cable trunking to connect the motor so that it just sits on top of the wheel. <coughs> I reused one of the hoverboard uh, connectors, stabilizers, I don't know what they're called, these things here. And I basically wedged a couple of things in there to make it a lot more stable. So it's in very solid, that's the main thing. On the end of the arm is a five kilo weight, which seems to force the motor to create more power. I don't know why, but I shall show you. And also you can clearly hear the sound difference. Unfortunately, I can't pedal and change the weight at the same time because that would be the ideal way to show you what's going on there. So I've got the other cap. <clears throat> I've got this camera connected, uh, filming the meter and the solar panel is putting in 5.8 watts. You can see there, 0.22 amps. Now, the, fund the fundamental thing that people fail to understand is the built-in epic overdrive ratio. This spin bike is a perfect machine for this job. How much power it makes has absolutely nothing to do with my legs whatsoever. This is perfect, because as I explained many times, and I'll show you again, for every one revolution of the pedals, the motor turns an astonishing 8.58 turns. You could actually increase that by getting rid of this rubberized wheel and putting some kind of slick on there, which would give you a ratio of approximately 9 to 1. That obviously gives us 60 RPM at the pedals equals over 500 RPM at the motor. That's why it produces power. And I also would like to state at this precise moment that I have seen a 1 kilowatt electric bike motor make over two kilowatts. Motors will do that. They're not designed to do that and you may kill them quite easily. For example, this motor is designed to run off a 36 volt system at 250 watts. I'm not sure how many RPMs this would actually do in a hoverboard, but it can't be that many because the hoverboards don't go very fast, do they? You can't have little kiddies riding around at 30 mile an hour falling off in the middle of the road, could you? So now I'm going to endeavour to pedal at 60 RPM and I'll just show you a close up of the motor and we'll make it in the video so that you can see my foot coming round. By the time I hit 60 RPM, there's no way you'll be able to tell how fast this is going other than by my feet. So I'm going to try pedaling. 60 rpm now we've got the meter recording and you'll be able to see if, what i'll do is i'll slow the footage down before i 
upload it and we'll try and get some basic RPMs and then we can calculate the motor speed. Like I say, this motor speed, this motor will be going so fast, it would be impossible for me, even slowing it down 10 times to work out. But I know, let's just do the one slow pedal, just so that you can see that. That's why I've done the line at the top. Right, we're gonna go around one full revolution. So that's zero. One. Two, three, four, just under halfway around the pedals, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half. So now I'm going to try and pedal at 60 RPM. So you can see there that the device is making at that speed only about 50 watts. I'm going to take the 5 kilo weight off and pedal at the same speed. So this is without the weight. Now I'm going to put the weight back on and I'm going to pedal as fast as I can but I will only be able to maintain this speed for about 10 seconds. Okay, I'm going to try and hit a fairly fast stable speed so then we can look back at the footage and roughly work out but if I can get anywhere near 120 then this bad boy is going to be doing over a thousand rpm. So ready, three, two, one, go. <sighs> <Woo. clears throat> and now I'm just gonna pedal jovially for a minute. at this speed. That's an easy speed to pedal at, in the short term anyway. I'm just going to concentrate on the other meter, which is the dump load meter. You'll actually see when we're getting around 30 volts this meter will switch on to indicate that the dump load is dumping electricity <sighs> Whew. okay so i'll pedal at a fairly high speed and you should see the meter at the top come on So the top meter is showing how much power is going to the dump load. And then if I slow down, that meter goes off. If I speed up again, it comes back on. See, this would be a great workout for somebody who's a cyclist. In fact, if anyone wants to buy this, they can have it for 300 quid. I'll even put a meter, etc., in the handlebars. All you'll need is some jump leads to connect it to a 24 volt battery. So, if anyone wants to buy it, 300 quid, hit me up. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to take the weight off. 
So that's the weight off. I'm knackered. And now you should see it, it won't matter how hard I pedal, the dump load won't come on. And that's the only real way I can show you that having the weight on produces more power. So before, you could get the dump load to come on fairly easily. But I can pedal as fast as I want. Oh, it did come on. But you can see there's hardly anything going to it. And it's a lot easier to pedal. Listen to the noise. Now listen to the noise with the weight on. sounds more beefy that is a video about the bike and the only claim I'm making is that this bike is perfect for this application you could spend years and years trying to make something yourself but this is perfect and it's because of the 8.5 to 1 overdrive ratio the fact that we have a super smooth bearing in here so there's virtually no loss and then the weight definitely makes a difference. So if you're looking to make something that transfers human energy into power, this is what you need. Don't bother spending days, months, years looking into it. This spin bike is exactly what you need. It's perfect. Right. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much.